An example of a major university's response to student needs is Harvard's new Department of Afro-American Studies, headed by Professor Eileen Southern. You know, Harvard is a place that you've heard about all your life. And I had visited the campus once, but I, it never occurred to me ever that I would be a professor here. Dr. Southern believes that one of the paths to understanding black history is through music. Obviously, black music does reflect the social conditions of the people who produced it. Uh, for example, in the 19th century, I doubt if the spirituals would have the poignancy that they have if they had not come from an enslaved people. She was a person of steel. She had to be. She was the first black woman tenured at the College of Arts and Science at Harvard University. The book, The Music of Black Americans, came out in 1971. It was landmark, you know? It really filled a void in the history of American music. And she even said that herself in the preface to the first edition, uh, this fills a void. If you look beyond the words to think about what Eileen Southern did in that book, how she uncovered all of these narratives at a time when she did not have access to the technology that we have now. And those materials that she tapped into were things that we really had no basis of understanding, I think, in musicology. It really enables us to tell a fuller story about American music history. The Southerns, Eileen Southern and her husband Joe Southern, founded Black Perspective in Music, ensuring that the project of Black music scholarship would be carried forward, planting the seed in Sam Floyd of what became an institution. His book, The Power of Black Music, was based directly on the, the bibliography that Eileen Southern and Josephine Wright edited. Power of Black Music has become one of the foundational texts for the next generation. In the 40s, 50s, and 60s, that's the year she was doing her work. That's when Black people were being lynched. They did not expect women to make any achievements. And if you were a Black woman, of course you weren't going to do anything. I refused to uh, be treated uh, differently than any other person. I just insisted upon being respected as an individual as a member of Afro-American Studies, as a member of the Harvard community, and they refused to give me that kind of respect. The Department of Afro-American Studies was born in quite revolutionary times. There was a great deal of unrest. Now, I was more concerned with her capacity to be a leader of Afro-American Studies than her accomplishments as a musicologist. Although she is the foremost authority on Black American music, she has found it difficult at times to be a double minority on the Harvard faculty. Working in the male-dominated university is difficult, she said, because men have a subtle way of putting you down, because they often do not accept women as scholars. Sexism and racism fused into one ism when Southern was chair of the Afro-American Studies at Harvard, a position she calls my most trying experience. The Harvard community treated her with hostility and sometimes contempt. She found little support within the department because often male faculty and students made merely existing a nightmare. Radcliffe Quarterly, September 1986. For many years, there was absolutely no sign of her, you know, no physical sign of her in the department that she had been a part of. That culture of erasure 
shaped much of what I understood about Eileen Southern. She was a part of a generation that created an infrastructure, an infrastructure to incubate and institutionalize black music in spaces that, that had never been conceptualized. Eileen Southern is the legacy builder, the pioneer mover of a scholarship that no person of color can possibly undertake without recognizing three things. The cost, the courage, the consistency with which she applied herself. Their legacy looms large and new generations recognize that this pioneer was someone who saw a world beyond what was presented to her. All of this music comes out of uh, miserable conditions, but uh, the kind of, the music is produced by people who have a positive attitude toward life. Sure, life is very difficult, but they look forward to a time when it won't be difficult. In other words, I think that black music has an optimism. Dear Mrs. Southern, ever since I first became acquainted with your book, The Music of Black Americans, I have wanted to write and say how much dead music owes you in your work. When some of the dust has settled and the time comes for taking inventory, it will not be clenched fists and afros that will weigh much in the balance, but works of the mind such as yours which will light the way home. Now, do you understand about the syncopation now? I have this little...